So now we come to the most fascinating aspect of the Islamic education system, and that is the development of the madrasa system. And uh, this is really where we see the golden age of Islam starting. It was with the development of the madrasa system that Muslims were able to set up an education system that allowed everybody to be the absolute best. So what is the madrasa system? The madrasa, the word madrasa means place of study, right? In Arabic, any word starting with a meme with a fatha ma generally indicates a place. So masjid is a place of sajda and uh, madrasa is a place of learning or place of study. And so when the Muslims eventually developed their own system of education, they called it the madrasa, the place of study. And the big difference between the madrasa that we are studying and uh, the madrasa that we know of today is that the madrasa of the golden age was a place where anybody could study anything from science to religion. It covered all subjects and you know, it's very different from what we see today. What we see today is actually the result of the uh, secularization of the Muslim world uh, when they were colonized by the British, where madrasa was separated from schools. So they had the British school system implemented in the mornings and madrasa was uh, left for the afternoons and became entirely about the religious studies. So that's, that's the after effects of colonization, uh, not the original system developed by Muslims, right? Uh, reality is the early Muslims did not regard Islamic studies as separate from academic studies. It was all one, it was all important. All that mattered was beneficial knowledge. So how did the system develop or what did it develop into? Well, over time the madrasa system grew into various departments depending on age level and level of expertise. So the lowest level that we know of is called the maktab. Right, uh, right till today, the uh, in many countries, the madrasa for young children is called maktab. Uh, the maktab initially meant a place where people could get the basic education, generally young children, but sometimes it may be adults or converts, but in general it was for young children, where they would learn the basics of, of Islamic law, Islamic beliefs, mathematics, language, reading, writing, all of this was taught in the maktab to prepare them for further education. Uh, so in this sense, it's very similar to the uh, elementary school system that we have today, with the only difference being that it incorporated both worldly and religious knowledge equally. Uh, higher than the maktab was the madrasa. Right? So once you finish maktab, you will go to madrasa, which is the institute of higher learning. And how this would work is that a student in maktab would show interest or skill in a specific area. And so the teachers would push them into that area to study that area specifically. And so when they go to madrasa, they would be given subjects and teachers and mentors according to the area that they show uh, skill in. And they would be uh, pushed to develop that skill until they become experts in that area. And that would lead eventually to them as adults going to the jami'a. Now the word jamia is quite interesting. It uh, originally meant a Juma Masjid, but now it means university because initially the place of learning was the Masjid, right? And the Juma Masjid was the place of higher education. So the Arabic word for university actually evolved from the Arabic word for uh, Juma Masjid. So the jamia is uh, essentially the university. The earliest concept we have of university level education for adults is the concept of the Jamia, uh, like the Al-Azhar, the Jamia Al-Azhar in Egypt, which was built 1,100 years ago and still operates as a university right until today. This is perhaps the earliest and longest running universities, uh, one of the earliest and longest running universities in the world. So. An adult who wanted to master a field, who wanted to become the best of the best in his field, would go to the Jamia to study under the professors and to uh, essentially uh, become one himself. So you can see it was a very comprehensive education system uh, made up of different levels and it was in many ways similar and in many ways different from the education system that we have today. So what happened? As with every other field, there was the decline and the decline of the Muslim world in terms of education led to the secularization of our education, right? So the decline of Islamic education uh, coincided with the Renaissance 
in the West and the growth of Western education systems. So for the bulk of our history, Westerners would travel to the Muslim world in order to study. So if they wanted to become doctors or philosophers or scientists, they would travel to Andalus, to Baghdad, uh, to these Muslim lands and study in our universities and gain this knowledge. And then they would take this knowledge back to their lands and try to educate their people. But eventually, as time went by and the Muslim world began to fall apart, Spain fell into the hands of the Christians and uh, the uh, Muslims began fighting each other and the Muslims became very st uh, stagnant in every area of life. At the same time that this was happening, the Renaissance happened in Europe and they began to develop their own uh, education systems and they began to become the world leaders in technology and science. And there was a complete shift in the power dynamics of the world. They became the leaders and the Muslim world fell behind. Eventually, this led to the colonial era where the Western powers were uh, capturing, uh, you can say, many of the Muslim lands like Egypt and India and enforcing their system of education upon the Muslims. And so when, for example, India, which was a Muslim country until the British colonized it, uh, when it was uh, colonized, the British implemented a uh, European school system. And the Muslims were forced to, to find a different way to keep the Islamic studies going. So they came up with the idea of the afternoon madrasa, where if they go to school in the mornings, then, you know, they'd get the Islamic education in the afternoons. And so religious education became separate from secular education. But this was not the case for the bulk of our history. This is a very recent development in history. And this is the after effects of secularization and colonization. Unfortunately, as the Muslim world fell further and further behind and the Western world became more and more powerful, eventually the secular school system became the dominant even in the Muslim world, even in basically every Muslim country. And the original Islamic system got it faded out and was replaced with the idea of a secular school system on weekdays and a madrasa or maktab system on weekends or afternoons dedicated solely for Islamic studies. And now, one of the main dangers or problems that came out of this is that we now have Muslims in the world today where there, there's a big rift between the religious and the secular Muslims and uh, heated debates over what's more important. So we have, for example, Muslim doctors and accountants and lawyers, some of whom regard Islamic studies as low, as, as not important, as something that only those who can't become doctors study. And so they look down upon the religious scholars. And uh, on the other hand, we have the uh, Muslims who study Islam and who become Maulanas and Sheikhs, but who look down upon relig uh, non-religious study. And uh, uh, some of them even may say things like school is haram or university is haram. And so we have this big rift in the Ummah because of the decline that happened in the Ummah in this area. So what can we learn from this? Well, the first thing we can learn from this is that the Muslim world did have the most effective school system, right? Uh, which is actually far more effective than the system we have today. I personally am a critic of the current school system. I don't send my children to school. I educate them myself at home. And I spend a lot of time trying to figure out a, a system that can be implemented today that will be more effective than what we have. Because I believe that the secular school system that we have today is not efficient it's uh it's, it creates more problems uh, than, than good and it, it's not really beneficial uh and what the muslim world had before was much better uh unfortunately you know trying to revive that today is not going to work the government won't go along with it society won't go along with it everybody wants to do what the west are doing so this is why i think we need to come up with a new system right uh, we need to come up with a new system that brings the best of both together and then perhaps people might be more open to the idea of something new rather than being open to the idea of going back to something from the past because people don't like things from the past being revived you know they always want to be moving forward so if we can find a way to make the madrasa system new again uh, then then we can perhaps bring balance back to the education system because unfortunately, we live in a time where some religious Muslims are ignorant of the world and many worldly experts are ignorant of the religion. And we want to go back to how it was, as you saw in the science and the culture uh, sections of this course, that uh, Muslims, they uh, throughout our history, 
uh, were balanced. You know, they, people would be hafiz of the Quran and scientists. They would be scholars of fiqh and f- philosophers or mathematicians. We need to go back to that level where a Muslim could specialize in both religious and secular knowledge, or we only call it secular knowledge. They would specialize in both religious knowledge and every other type of beneficial knowledge. And in that way, we could be world leaders again. But to do this, we really need to revive or invent a better education system. Because the one that we are working in right now actually works against us.